On this episode of the Ask Mike Reinald Show, we talk about getting back to high level activities when you have an irreparable rotator cuff. The Ask Mike Reinald Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back everybody to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We are up at Champion PT and Performance in Boston, Mass. I'm here with a collection, not quite everybody, who are we missing? We're missing just Dave, right? We're missing, we're missing Dave on this episode, but he'll be back. He's on a little sabbatical for the next 15 minutes, but he will be <laughs> back soon. But I'm here with Mike Scaduto, Dan Pope, Lenny McCrina, and for the first time, Ooh. introducing Ooh. Lisa Russell, new physical therapist that we have here at Champion PT and Performance. Welcome, Lisa. Welcome. 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 Lisa, briefly, 20 second overview. Just tell us how awesome you are. How awesome is, that, is that an awkward way to introduce her to the podcast? But tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, where'd you go to school and what's your specialty and Great. stuff like that? Yeah, um, I went to Ithaca College for undergrad and grad school. Um, and I mostly specialize with rowers, but generally like your usual everyday athlete. Yeah, like the fitness athletes and and just everyday Mm -hmm. athletes. Yeah, so we're super excited to have Lisa aboard. Another um, perspective on the uh, podcast, hopefully, with just more and more people. So I don't know how we're going to fit everybody, but we'll figure that stuff out. We may have to like change. You should sit on my lap. (laughs) (laughs) Dave's going to lay down in front of us. We we may have to figure out like a new format. Do we do like a U table? It's a round table discussion instead of us like facing the camera. But um, anyway, Len, uh, briefly. What, what do we have? Who do we have for students today? We got a tremendously new crop of students, probably since the last podcast. So uh, we'll go left to right. Maybe not new new students. Uh, Austin Riff from uh, Franklin Pierce University in the great state of Arizona. We have Andrew King uh, from the University of Hartford, right here in uh, New England State, Connecticut, and uh, kind of new to us as well is Joe Goyet Goyet Goyet. Getty uh, from Virginia Commonwealth <laughs> University in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Commonwealth. How many Commonwealths are there? I don't know. Yeah. Massachusetts is one in Virginia, so it's just a. All right, what do we got for a question today? All right, we got Austin's Dylan on. from Montana. Dylan. Big fan of the podcast. We have a 48 year old male with an irreparable infraspinatus who is very active. What kind of outcome should we expect as he rehabs? His goal is to eventually get back to Spartan races. Is this feasible, or will arthritis develop so bad he will need a shoulder replacement? Yes. Ooh. Two different questions, but I like that. <laughs> is it feasible? Yes. Uh, all right, so a 48-year-old patient with an irreparable rotator cuff, which is a conundrum. I just wanted to use that word in an episode today. So we're in a conundrum, right? You have an irreparable cuff, so which usually means it's a pretty big cuff tear and it's probably retracted, right? Len, is that, I mean, why else would it be irreparable? Probably, yeah. You know, yeah. 48 year old is probably not like yeah. ridiculously chronic. Yeah. So it's a, it's a probably a large tear that's retracted, meaning like they don't have a chance to like put it back. Um, and you know, he wants to get back to high level activity. So specifically a Spartan race, but if you're a Spartan racer, you're, you're probably a fit person, right? You do a bunch of other things. So why don't we start with that question and let's do the two together because I think we will need to address the potential for arthritis down the road, but is it feasible for this person to get back to Spartan races? What do you guys think? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> All right, great episode. Right. Yeah, want, how many times did we do that joke? Wrap it up. <laughs> well, I would say yes, right? I mean, what, go ahead, go ahead, Dan. Oh, man, there's, there's a lot of layers to this, I think. So one, I think it depends on where the person's at. So I've seen some, some CrossFit athletes that have fully retracted rotator cuff tendons, and they can still do CrossFit, and they may have some pain. Sometimes they might not have much pain. Um, so I think it depends on the person that's in front of you. Uh, my big concern is that if they have too much rotator cuff damage over the course of time, do they get to the point where they have to get a reverse total shoulder eventually as opposed to a total shoulder replacement? Right. Um, I guess it depends on which tendons are retracted, how many, that type of deal, right. which I don't fully know. Um, but I guess long story short, probably yes, but the other part is you, you probably do need to be careful and have that doctor first get checked out by the doctor 
uh, frequently over the course of time to make sure they're not progressing to the point where they can't get um, a regular shoulder replacement. Heck of a best case scenario. Heck of a disclaimer right there, Dan. I like how you, you did that there. Just make sure your frequent check-ins with the physician to make sure you're on path. Of. So, Len, it sounded like you agreed, right? You want to, I mean, yeah, I would say you so. agree that it's feasible, right? What, why do we think it's feasible? Uh, I mean, just the way, I mean, when you tear a tendon, other muscles can take over. So you have your posterior delt, you have your teres minor, um, you have other muscles that can definitely compensate and help. But I also think not knowing the whole situation is age, to, to have a 48-year-old with an irreparable infraspinatus. Oh wait, they said infra? Yeah. yeah. Uh, rats. Very, I, was, I was gonna base this all on no, superspinatus. Very, very unusual, <laughs> so it sounds like uh. it may have been a freak injury, um, but I would also try to get, a, not knowing the situation, a second opinion because Nowadays, with internal bracing and tendon transfers, they can do like a lat transfer or something like that. I think there's ways to get around this, but maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe, maybe. But yeah. I would want to consult with like surgeons that specialize in these type of surgeries and and really try to push them in that direction to give them the best opportunity to continue to train because they're only 48. If this was a 68 or 78 year old, I'd say you know different story. You know, work on strengthening. It is what it is, and you know, activity levels down. But this is a 48 year old. Um, so I think there's still a, a good opportunity to do more for this person than if they just got one opinion and said irreparable, but then, again, true. not knowing the whole situation. Right. Um, but I think the body is amazing that it can over, overtake you know, these issues and, and figure out a way to still perform. You know, the body's a wonderland. It's a, my body's a wonderland. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so, I'm actually, so, you know, it's kind of funny. So irreparable we got that is it feasible to do these things of course everything's feasible I don't think we should ever tell anybody like you can't or you shouldn't or whatever I mean everything's feasible it just depends on on where they're at now I, I, I would just add before we maybe get Mike and Lisa to, to chime in a little bit here but like I would just add that the fact that it is infraspinatus worries me a little bit that right. not the feasibility is there but maybe my optimism is less i'm a little bit more pessimistic that this will go well but again anybody can do anything it's just whether or not it's a good idea so um i don't know i, I think we i think we we covered the feasibility thing why don't we switch gears and say what what are the chances of this person developing arthritis and how do we manage that i guess and does that matter and, and those types of things i mean who wants to might do you think considering the mechanism of injury for the original cuff tear is, is important there? Because if it's a traumatic, um, if it was a traumatic injury versus like a chronic overuse training type injury, um, probably speaks to how you have to modify their training going forward. <coughs> so if it's somebody who was maybe training suboptimally and, and ended up tearing their rotator cuff to this point, like you probably spend a lot of time educating them on how to modify their training going forward and that'll be a big piece of the rehab. I don't know, what are your thoughts on, what are your thoughts on that? I think that makes sense. <coughs> if it was a snowboarding accident and it's this freak accident and everything else was great, then yeah, absolutely. But yeah, if if part of this attrition of the rotator cuff is from four, you know, activities and things they've done in the past, but by all means, I think the feasibility question goes downhill. And then you could argue then also the chronic arthritis concept goes up. Right, so that's a that's a good thing is you know understanding why this happened. Was it an acute traumatic like goofball kind of thing, or was it a chronic attrition that I think changes that? It's so a good it, point. If it was acute trauma, uh, traumatic injury, like what else happened? Did they dislocate their shoulder? Was it an instability event? Something like that it could also play into the prognosis. Right. That's a good point. So put it all together. So I and I think that is going to be something that we consider with is this person at risk for for arthritis? Lisa, anything? I know we kind of covered a bunch, but yeah, I mean even even just on the like arthritis side of things, in in terms of how it happened and what the trauma was, and thinking like short term traumatic arthritis versus longer term overuse, depending on what the mechanics of the shoulder end up being, and. I mean, you're just educating the person of like what they're working with and how they need to deal with it and what to avoid or what, you know. Right. I guess it, that goes I back like to that. even like the strengthening side of like if we're just working without surgery or if like Lenny said, you go back and find somebody else who can be more creative, but just right. telling the person what they're working with and sort of how to keep their shoulder safe. 
Right. I, and I, I think I like what you said there was that like it's almost like taking their symptoms into account to an extent too here. And that's probably the biggest thing that I would recommend kind of moving forward is that you, you, you take their symptoms into account. If they're not having any symptoms and they're super strong with the surrounding musculature, then I, I don't see a reason why we should let them, we should limit them, right? Because if, you if you're getting arthritis and it's building up over time, you're probably getting symptoms as well. It's not like all of it, you're developing raging arthritis behind the scenes, have no idea, and then all of a sudden one day it's too late, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I looked into this research at one point because I felt like I didn't have good answers for my patients because you can have cuff pathology, right, and maybe not have pain. We know that. Right. Um, the other thing is that most people, after they have a rotator cuff tear, it continues to worsen over the course of time, right? right. It just gets worse, and that's kind of natural. Uh, what's challenging is that if you do get a retracted tear and you can't do surgery on it anymore, that may end up being a problem. Right. Um, the other problem is that we can't really guess if people are worsening over the course of time. And there's a few variables that do. I think one of the things I was finding is smoking is bad. That's going to make that tend to get worse faster. And the other one was pain. So I do think there is some, I don't know, some viability to the whole idea of let's train, but let's be careful about pain. If things are worsening, yeah, go, go talk to the doctor and let's make sure it's not a worsening problem. And, and like you said previously, it's like you get a good relationship with the doc. Maybe you're checking in with them every now and then. If you want to use your body to the max and you have this scenario, then maybe you need to have more check-ins just to make sure you're not going the wrong direction. But, yeah. you know, I think the problem just kind of, I guess, to like summarize here is like, yes, is it feasible? Of course it's feasible. Is it a good idea? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, it really depends on the scenarios there. But what happens when you have a cuff tear is that you've lost the complete dynamics of the glenohumeral joint. And it's not going to work perfect like Lenny said like could they compensate could they can others help absolutely could they do a good job with that absolutely but you're like your room for error goes down right and then you just you just have like a, a smaller cliff um, that you could fall off that you just got to be careful with that because what's going to happen with the cuff is you're going to lose that ability to center the humeral head and over time you're going to probably superior migrate and that is where you're going to develop your arthritis but again I think you're going to know it's coming but don't be the knucklehead that keeps working through it until you get a raging arthritic situation because then you're gonna really be in trouble so um, very feasible that they get arthritis it's probably actually likely does anybody think he has a chance of not getting arthritis you know and arthritis for the shoulder kind of stinks you know so um, you know something to kind of keep in mind so hopefully those tips helped hopefully those were you know at least some things that you can have some conversations with if you have somebody that's very similar to that so I think that's actually pretty common as our activities as we age increase and as the activities we're doing in our 20s and 30s increase, I think we're gonna see a lot more of this in 10 years or so. So, thank you everyone. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, another great uh, question, thank you so much. If you have a similar question, head to MikeRinald.com and click on that podcast link and you can fill up the form to ask us a question. Hopefully we'll feature it on a future episode. We'll see you in the future? Yes. Hopefully. <laughs>